Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to this Friday evening stream. Uh, first off, before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring this stream. Now this stream is all about uh, Alan Wake 2. Now if you were tuned in last Saturday, you'll remember that we we did the uh, the first unboxing of the Alan Wake 2 mystery box and we got our um, like our flashlight, our torch, uh, our gloves, our post-it notes and all that kind of stuff and I had a board behind me um, and I pre-filmed the second box and there's a lot in there it's very very good so it's going to be like last week we're going to watch a, a pre-filmed segment of a video that I pre-filmed earlier this week and uh, it's the unboxing of the Alan Wake 2 mystery box mailer 2. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of the Alan Wake 2 mystery. First of all, I want to say a massive thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. Uh, so in the last one, what we did is we, we opened the first mailer box, uh, and that was a box from the FBI, uh, and it contained stuff pertaining to and uh, an investigation. Uh, it was sent by a special agent, Stacy Marrow. Letters here, special agent Stacy Marrow. A lot of you guys were really excited to seeing the first. What was in the first box? I I did miss something out of the the first box. So we're going to cover that today. Now, if you look down here, we've got we've got our stuff ready. We've got our <laughs> got post-it notes. We've got our red string. We've got a pen. We've got our notepad. Yeah, and we've got our our flashlight in the blue light and also I said last week last time that I was going to get some some of these um, magnetic kind of drawing pins if you like anyway let's get into the first bit I've got my I've got my drink in my 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 greatest FBI agent cup all right so we've got a box we're now going to look at what I missed okay so we'll do that first uh, where's my I need to turn lights off so we can get a good effect on here so we use our, our light on the box I can already see something it's gonna be hard for me to show you guys hang on look we have can I put the you can see that it's hard to hard to see it with the thing look anyway you can see there's there's a an arrow here there you are it's better you can see it now there's an arrow there so Let's um, open up this little compartment and see what we've got inside. It's a little hidden hidden compartment in the box, and we got oh we got one more package. All right, let's get rid of this. I think this is done though now. This box, awesome. Okay, let's open this. I'm gonna put my gloves on because one of the important things was not to contaminate the evidence. And we need to play. We need to play along, guys. We need to play along. We need to get into the part go I'm ready I'm ready to investigate right let's, let's open this and see what we've got inside all oh, right it's okay we've got all oh, right trying to there you are we've got a picture of a of a deer head now I, I'm presuming that this is something to do with the Odea diner that's the first thing that comes to it comes to mind is it the, to do oh it's got a we've got a QR code on the back so see what comes up what we've got Flip the switch, it goes blink. Lights are off. But somebody's home. Somebody's home. That was, uh, that was pretty creepy. Lights are off, but somebody's home. Right, I'm gonna write that in my book. So that's the deer photo. Flip, switch. Lights off. Nobody's home. All right, got that in my book. Flip, switch, lights off, nobody's home. All right. We've got something in our book, so that's good. So we've got this. Right, um, I'm going to put this on the board. Maybe, oh, there we go, it does. We put that, uh, let's put it here. And we'll put a little, maybe a purple post-it note on, uh, saying, oh dear diner, maybe. So that's the diner that um, Alan first walks into in, in Alan Wake 1. So let's pop that on there. I think it's something to do with the Odea Diner. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, this is what it's all about, guys, surmising. There's something else, though. There's something else in this. I wonder why it was hidden away in a secret compartment. 
Maybe I can write that in my book as well. Dear photo was hidden away. Like, is someone trying to... Is someone intercepted the FBI box is trying to tell me something. Who knows? Anyway, let's... let's uh, what have we got here? Oh, a letter. Ooh. Don't tell anyone about this letter. It'll probably wind up as new evidence. I was risking my life just writing it, let alone sneaking it into the box. You were... Ch oh, here we go. That explains why. I was risking my life just writing it. I think this is Stacy, maybe? I don't think it's coincidence you're working on something as heavy as the Bright Falls case from day one. I think they know that you know what that place is really like. As a picture in the envelope, think of it as a clue to get you started. You may have seen something like it before when you close your eyes. Everything counts on you and your silence and your silence. Read between the lines. Oh, you're the only one who can stop this. Always keep a flashlight with you. Got it, don't worry. Stay in the light. Don't go anywhere, and I mean anywhere. Stay out of the dark where the lights are popping or flickering. You don't know what's really in there. Interesting. Right, let's scan this, this with the thing. Is there anything on there? Anything on the front? No, there's nothing there. Okay, right. All right, so that's that basically concludes everything from from Mailer 1. That's a, that's a cool... We got a cool letter there. A nice cool letter. Looks good. Okay, so this is a letter that was in the box. Oh, my writing's off today. Letter from FBI box. Maybe down there. Or flapping about. It wind. Okay, excellent. Right, we've got we've got uh, we've got a few things on our case board now, look. It's taking shape, guys. It's taking shape. So we're gonna open up the new the new delivery today, and I'm really excited about this one. Now this is the this is the delivery that came. It's just a fat envelope. Careful of paper cuts. Careful of ripping my special investigation gloves. Oh, there's a load of stuff in here. Oh cool, right? Oh, this is sick. This is so sick. Right, there's a letter here first. Let's read letter. It's from our friends, Supervisory Special Agent Stacey Marrow again. I'm writing this letter to follow up my earlier correspondence. I would like to attract your attention to two files amongst the others regarding the unsolved murders of Bright Falls residents, Ted Lane and Wendy Davis. A car key was recovered from the location of Davis's murder. We've been unable to trace the vehicle that the keys belong to, though they are attached to a keyring from the local Odea diner. Their autopsy reports show that they had unusual markings on their bodies. That's what we have to go on. I want you to study these files with extreme care and make use of the tools you were provided with in your orientation pack. Go over it again, explain when you've finished, and keep doing so until we need you for more important tasks. If you find any leads that connect the murders or shed any light on the unsolved murders, please add them to your case board. I'll contact you at a later date to check your progress. Excellent. Right, let's scan this. I'm scanning everything. Scanning everything, guys. There's nothing on this letter, though. There's no hidden messages. So we had a second Stacy letter from Stace. Stacy M. So it's Ted Lane, Wendy Davis. So we got two victims. Got two victims, guys. Right, let's put this on the board as well. I'm gonna run out of room, I think. I'll, po I'll post it know everything as well. Second letter from Stacy. I'll put like no marks or something. There's no marks on the letter. Come on, play along. Oh, I've turned upside down on mine. Absolute turnip. Right. Oh, I love how this case board's building up. This is exciting. All right, so we let's have a look at the rest of the evidence. So she said, um, we've got an evidence thing here. This was from the bed of Cauldron Lake. So if, you're, if some of you remember, when Alan and Alice Wake first got to Bright Falls, they were meant to meet a, a local mechanic called by the name of Carl Stuckey at the Odia Diner. And Stuckey wasn't there. Um, I think he'd been locked in the bathroom by um, a mysterious veiled lady called Barbara Jagger. And instead of Stucky obviously giving them the key and the directions for the, the, the lodge that they were going to stay at, Barbara then instead gave them the directions and the key for a cabin on Cauldron Lake, which if any of you have seen Control is, is a place of power. Um, and the lake within it holds kind of like a mystery. And that's where obviously Alan dived in and got trapped in the dark place. Anyway, I think my, my lore is up to date. But anyway, oh look, we've got, we've got a map. A map. A map of Bright Falls. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Really, really cool. Oh, don't rip it. Don't rip it. Oh, we didn't we didn't rip it. We didn't rip it. Much. Cool. So we've got 
We've got a map here of Bright Falls. And this is this is actually sick. We've got Cauldron Lake here. So I'm gonna put this, oh, will that fit in the middle? On a nicely populated board. Right, bear with me, I might time lapse this to make it a bit faster. All right, so we've got a cauldron lake here. There, the car key, oh, this is Stucky's gas station. The car key was found by the Odea Diner. I'm assuming that there is the Odea Diner with the, the restaurant symbol. You know what, I might tape that to the board. That looks better. I think that looks a bit better. It's not so, um, so saggy. <laughs> Let's open up this, I'm, I'm curious about this. All right, we're gonna open up this one, which is, this was evidence found on the bed of Cauldron Lake and the victim was Wendy Davis. The car key. Right, let me scan it. Like I said, I'm scanning everything. Oh, look, can you see that? Look. Oh, have I got to, what does this mean? I like the key ring though. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> um, right, hang on. What? What could that mean? I'm trying to surmise. All right, so this was found in the bed of Cauldron Lake. Do I need to take the key apart? Do you think? Use a screwdriver to take the key apart? That's very interesting and I'm very intrigued. I need to find a flipping screwdriver now. I'm going to treasure hunt around my own house trying to find things no can't i don't have a an attachment small enough anyway all right let's get into the next one anyway car key found bed of cold lake there we are right that was found in the bed of cauldron lake but that there like that she's so got a car key bed of cauldron lake uh, i like the oh dear diner key ring that's very cool we've got another big kind of Envelope within an envelope. Please do not bend. Anything else in here? Let me let me just on a scan. Literally everything. I want to make sure I've not missed anything. Like idiot I was when I didn't fully check the box's contents. Did I? Eh? Intriguing to say the least. Very cool. Just making sure, guys, just making sure. We have a really cool looking case file here, which is um, homicide, yeah? Oh, we've got oh, two case files. So these are for the two victims, obviously. So we're gonna go through some case files now and have a little look. What should we start with? Should we start with, let's just start with this one first. We'll put that one to the side for now. Let's open up our case file. So this, this is, I've covered up their names. Hang on, I've got them in the book. This is Wendy Davis. All right, so we've got Wendy. It says right there, Harry. Okay, Wendy Davis. So this is her car key, isn't it? This is her car key. Belonged to Wendy Davis. It was found on the bottom of Cauldron Lake. Right, so we've got a picture of Wendy here. This is Wendy, the late Wendy Davis. Um, Put that there so you can see right we've got victim profile from bright falls sheriff's department oh my gosh we've got photos look at that if you can focus please oh, i'll put it down there right we've got crime scene one crime scene photo two and crime scene photo three now this looks like a ligature around someone's neck poor poor wendy's neck and then we've got deer a deer footprint there we are your dear footprints, look. I'll show you the first one. If I go really close, it'll focus. There we go. And that's crime scene photo number one. And then number three is where she was uh, found. The unfortunate soul. Okay, so that's crime scene photos one, two, and three. Now, um, cause of death, according to the Bright Falls Sheriff Department, was drowning. Injuries, wound in torso, uh, with lung, heart, and liver missing bloated body when she was married didn't have a mobile phone 29 years old born february 15th 1981 the location of body was bed of cauldron lake and a body was found floating on cauldron lake 20th 
the eighth, I guess. Significantly bloated with a large chest cavity. Heart, left lung, and liver were missing. She was a kindergarten teacher at Bright Falls. What else have we got? Wendy, this is her autopsy report. Suffered from considerable bloating due to being submerged in cauldron lake for eight years. Davis's heart, left lung, and liver were missing. The length of time her body was underwater and signs of predation marks around the soft tissue of the wounds. Right lung and stomach lead us to conclude that local wildlife caused the chest wound and subsequent missing organs. So she was eaten, but they've they put the cause, the uh, the manner of death as undetermined. Well, she was 29, and the type of death was violent. You don't say. And this is a missing poster from Wendy's husband. You see my wife, Wendy Davis. She's 29, has dark brown hair, hazel eyes, which could be mistaken for green, and is petite. She's a teacher at the local kindergarten and does a lot in the community. She leads the deer scouts. Will that be relevant? Because we got a deer photo, look. Yeah. She hasn't been herself lately. Wendy's been spaced out, missing work, muttering to herself and becoming very irritable. One day I came home from work and she just wasn't there anymore. It's been two weeks and I don't know what to do. None of her stuff is missing. And the last I saw of her, she was wearing a white nightgown before bed. Okay, and we got a newspaper clipping. Gil Davis found not guilty. That was her husband, Gil Davis. Gil Davis is on the trial for the murder of his wife, Wendy Davis, but the jury found him not guilty after a week of deliberations. Thursday, Bright Falls resident Gil Davis cried outside court today after being found not guilty of his wife Wendy's murder. It took the jury a week to find 34-year-old Mr. Davies not guilty of Wendy Davis's murder, bringing the three-month trial to a close. Speaking on the court steps after his acquittal, Mr. Davis said that he was exhausted and upset that his wife's killer is still at large. He called for anybody with information surrounding his wife's death to come forward. This brings an end to years of suffering since my arrest, Mr. Davis told reporters, but it's nothing compared to what happened to my beautiful wife Wendy over a decade ago. I cooperated with the Bright Falls Sheriff's Department from the first second and look where I am now. They are more interested in locking me up than trying to find my Wendy. Her killer is still out there, hiding in darkness. Somebody out there must know what happened. Mr. Davis refused to comment when asked if he could bring legal action against the Bright Falls Sheriff's Department. Authorities also refused to comment on the not guilty verdict. Wendy Davis disappeared in 2010. Her body was found floating on Cauldron Lake in 2018. Gil Davis was later arrested and charged with murder. Discussing the circumstances of Miss Davis's death during the trial, the coroner revealed that her corpse was missing organs, including her heart, left lung, and liver. The coroner told the prosecutor that there was doubt if Mr. Davis could have been responsible, factoring in the wildlife present within the lake. Mr. Davis prote protested his innocence throughout the trial, saying that his wife had been herself before she disappeared. He claimed Mrs. Davis was missing when he returned home from work one day, with his legal team focusing on a lack of evidence con connecting Mr. Davis with his wife's disappearance. And it just says about the um, the Odia Diner wanting mascots and mortgage madness at Bright Falls. Wait, let me. I haven't scanned any of this. Let's let's give it a good scan. Oh, the key is the key. Of course, the key is the key. Right, I need to. I need to get that flipping key open. Ah, oh, the key. What could this possibly mean? Twist. We got nice. Do I need to like? Oh look! Oh god! Here we go! We got it! We got it! Guys, we got it! We got it! We got it! Look! We found a little note. We've got a note. What does this say? This. So, if you remember, victims had strange symbols carved into their their skin and their bodies and there must be a code on the bodies can we see a code on any of these cool so we got we got a weird note inside the car key which is very very cool so that was recovered from the the bed the bed of cauldron lake and we've just found this inside it um is there any any special thing on it no nope. okay that's interesting so we've got we've got kind of a good amount of evidence now. Um, I'm going to put some of this on the board. So we've got our first, our, one of our victims, um, Wendy, right? She was found at the bottom of Cauldron Lake. So if I put that there, that's Wendy. And I'm going to get some string. Okay, I had to take the car key off because it was weighing it down a bit, but. Yeah, so we've got, cool, so we've got Wendy Davis there, look. We've got the fact that Gil Davis was found not guilty. So I'll put that somewhere as well. All right, look how it's taking taking shape, guys. But her 
little uh, Bright Falls Sheriff Department. Um, I am, I'm obviously um, wary that we've got another put another thing to put, but well, I'm going to put him this side and take the Stacey Marrow things off. It's looking good so far. Right, let's get these up there as well. <laughs> How cool is this looking now? We've also got this. This is the symbols. I want to put a post-it note on that. Symbols found on bodies. Note found inside. Car key. What else have we got? We've got the missing poster. I don't think I'm going to put that anywhere, but we've also got this. I'm missing I'm I'm missing out on a lot of real estate up here, look. Yeah, it's case files building nicely. I just want to double check in here again, see if I've overlooked anything. I don't think I have. Okay, cool. Right, we're done with this case. So now on to case number two. All right, let's get this out of the way. Thank you, Wendy. And I'm sorry for, you know, what you went through. But now we're on to number two. All right. Um, and this will be Ted Lane. This is poor Ted. Poor old Ted. So you've got Ted Lane here. I'm gonna do you know I'm put their names on there because I'm gonna forget. Right, Ted's gonna go where opposite to where Mandy did. Mandy, Wendy. So we've got we've got crime scene pictures. Excellent, right. Right, we've got a victim profile. I wonder if there's any marks. Let me just scan these with the light. See if there's any uh, odd stuff on the back or anything. Nothing, good. What is that? His arm or? Are these like the, there's markings here. As you can see, there's like markings, look. Black markings, I'm not sure whether they're a tattoo or something, but it's crime scene number two, crime scene photo. Oh, a hand, we've got a hand. I definitely see something untoward on there. There we are, a hand. Crime scene number three, there we go. Right, let's put those on the board. Where was Ted found? So this guy was a dentist. He was 43 years old, single, uh, 5'11". Like I said, he's a dentist, homicide, no tattoos. Right, so they were markings on his arm, I think. Right, so he, loss of blood due to, he was stabbed. Multiple stab wounds to chest area and significant bruising on wrists. Buried in woodland on the outskirts of the watery. Right, where's the water? Oh, here. He's buried in woodland, so it's somewhere around here. So this is the wa this is the watery here. So there's Bright Falls, and the watery is down here. So it's not far from where from where Wendy was found in Cauldron Lake. So it's just across from there. So he's found somewhere around there. So I guess we should put a another piece of string. Right. So there we go. Ted was found somewhere around the watery in the woodland. And Wendy was found in Cauldron. There we go. Right. Excellent. Lane's body was found in Watery Woods in 2012. Corpse was bloated. Body had bruises on wrists and stab wounds all over his torso. Yeah, that, that's all right, isn't it? There we go. We've got Ted's missing poster, obviously. Right, so Ted Lane was found to have piercing trauma to his torso, suggesting he was stabbed in a frenzy. Lane's body also has bruising around his wrists indicating a struggle and that he was bound to an object when the attack took place. His throat and lungs contained dirt, likely from his woodland grave. Lane's corpse is substantially bloated as though he was submerged underwater for a lengthy period of time before being buried. So he, someone found his body, they took it out of the water and buried it. It's very strange, look, so there's his, his report. Cause of death, manner of death, homicide. Um, cause of, probable cause of death was exsanguination. Is that like bleeding out from stab wounds? And then obviously we've got you know, violent, violent crime. So we, we felt like we've learned a bit more, a lot more actually about our two victims. All right, and of course we've got another, another newspaper clipping, right? So let's, let's scan this and see if there's anything on, on. Oh, it's died. How has it already died? Oh, you're joking me. Can I open this compartment? Oh, here we go. Well, if I can get it working so I can look at this last bit and that would be, um, That'll be ideal. Oh, it's burning. I can smell burning. Maybe I'll stop using it. Cool, anyway, I didn't seem to be any any stuff on there, so I feel like this is dead. This completely died. Um, a drowned before being buried. The discovery of Ted Lane's body in a shallow grave in Watery's Woodlands raises more questions than answers. Wednesday, Bright 
Paul's Sheriff's Department says is a loss to explain the mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of 43-year-old dentist Ted Lane and have issued a call for anyone with information to come forward. At a press conference last night, Sheriff Sarah Breaker outlined more information about the condition Mr. Lane's body was found in, revealing details from the autopsy report suggesting that he may have been kidnapped and murdered. According to Sheriff Breaker, Mr. Lane's body was found with multiple stab wounds to the chest and strap marks on the wrists. The corpse also showed signs that it had been submerged underwater for quite some time, leading to significant bloating. Sheriff Breaker refused to elaborate further on the circumstances surrounding Mr. Lane's death and confirmed whether he was drowned or stabbed. Ted Lane had clearly been stabbed to death, Sheriff Breaker responded, but the coroner wasn't sure whether to record death by drowning at one stage. We are certain it was a homicide though. When asked if there was a miscommunication between the Bright Falls Sheriff's Department and the Mountain County Medical Examiner, the press conference was brought to a close. Ted Lane's body was discovered in a shallow grave on the outskirts of Watery three months ago by a local dog walker, walker in Woodland two years after Mr. Lane went missing in September 2010. September 2010. Maybe I should put a note on that. Mr. Lane was participating in Deerfest with his friend Jay Hutinami when he went missing. Mr. Hutinami was later questioned but released without charge, insisting that Mr. Lane had simply vanished into thin air. So he was at Deerfest. Oh, Deerfest was Deerfest was going on, was about to go on or going on when Alan Waite got to Bright Falls, wasn't it? Participate again yeah, because he saw some floats at the, the gas station, didn't he? Participating in Deerfest. Interesting. So we'll, uh, I was un unfortunately, I was unable to see um, whether there was any stuff on this, any any markings, because the the thing, you know, died. So there you are, stick now on you. Okay, right. And Ted went missing in September of 2010. All right, so we've got we've got um, a good bit of progress in our investigation, um, as I said. So we've we've got these two letters from Stacy. So we'll go over the second letter again just to make sure we have we know where we are. So um, I'd like to attract your attention to two files amongst others regarding the unsolved murders of Bright Falls resident Ted Lane and Wendy Davis. Um, a, car, a, a car key was recovered from the location of Davis's murder, been able to trace the vehicle. Right, so they can't find the vehicle. Car key, here we are. Couldn't find, couldn't trace the vehicle where the car key was from. So they are attached to a queue from a local Odia diner. Their autopsy reports show they had unusual markings on their bodies. Um, again, we, we haven't found, I couldn't find any of the markings on their bodies from what we had from the evidence. So anyway, the, that was really, really exciting, really interesting. Um, it's been a long one today, um, but that's a testament to how much evidence we've gone through and we've unpacked. So that hopefully un unwraps a little bit more of the mystery behind this. But yeah, guys, we're gonna have to find out there's one more delivery coming. I'm really excited to, to find out what that is going to be. I'll try and get another, um, although maybe it might be, this might be it for this kind of evidence. Like, it's kind of, I don't know. There probably more, there probably is more, but I'll try and get a replacement for, for this because it, it definitely blew up. Um, the, 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 the flashlight still works, the torch still works, so that's good. But anyway, look, it's been good. It's been great, actually. I've really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys have too. Again, a absolutely massive thank you to Epic Games for involving me in this, um, for sponsoring this video and allowing us to kind of unwrap a mystery. This is new to me and it's really cool. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I hope you guys are too. Remember, if you want to pre-order Alan Wake 2 on the Epic Games Store, my creator code in the pre-order link is down there. But yeah, guys, take care and I'll see you in the next one. And that was it, guys. That was that was the mailer number two. Um, so, what do you think of that one? I thought it was, I thought it was really good. I thought it was. Uh, there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot of meat in there. Um, like I said, I've already I've already kind of pre-filmed the third one, so I I kind of know what's what's coming next. And it's it's amazing. Like the next the next bits are really 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 good. Um, so yeah, guys, get in the comments. What did you what did you think? What what do you think is going on? You know, obviously we've got we've got the hot bed of kind of Cauldron Lake, where you know everything revolves around Cauldron Lake, being that it's a place of power, and things like that. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited for for you guys to 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 learn more about what's uh, what's going on in this in this mystery. Um, obviously, we we have, I think, how many years? Thirteen. I think it's thirteen years have passed since since Alan Wake One and Alan Wake Two. Um, so. 
a lot of stuff's changed, a lot of stuff's happened. Um, if you haven't already, go and check out all the, like, the trailers and the gameplay and stuff like that. It's, it, the game does look fantastic. And I'm not just saying that. It, like, the game does genuinely look really good. It looks really creepy as well. One thing I loved about Alan Wake 1 was the creepy factor. Uh, you know, like the torch and the, like the flashlight and the gun. Um, you say the deer's the killer. It could be. It could be the killer. We never know. We don't know who. The, we don't know who's what's happened yet. So, um, it is going to be. It is going to be really, really good. And I know you guys are going to love the next episode. Remember to tune in next Friday at nine pm again, where we're going to be unra unraveling the final part of the mystery, and we're going to find out what's what happens and how that's going to lead into the events of Alan Wake Two. Again, a huge thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring the stream. You can find my creator code down there in the comments or the pinned comment on this stream. And you can go and pre-order Alan Wake on the Epic Games store. But for now, guys, take care and I will see you in the next one.